DeWitt now appears in person. Ms. Shirley, how does your client wish to proceed on this interference with law enforcement officer? Uh, your Honor, at this time, the county attorney and I have discussed the matter. My, my client would be willing to enter a, uh, a guilty plea. So, Ms. DeWitt, how then do you plead the interference with the law enforcement officer as charged? Guilty. Is anyone making you enter this plea today by any kind of threat or promise other than a plea agreement? No. You understand if I accept your guilty plea, you will be admitting the charge? Yes. And that you'll be giving up your right to trial and you will be convicted without the opportunity to appeal that conviction? Yes. Then tell me please in your own words, what you did on December 22nd, 2023 that would make you guilty of this charge? Um, we got pulled over because my husband had thrown my phone out the window. I got out of the car to go get it. I fell and a couple stopped to help me get up. When I got, when we got up, I got in the car. Well, they had called the police and told them there was domestic violence going on in the car, which there wasn't. But um, my husband got in the driver's seat. I was in the passenger seat. When the cops pulled us over, or pulled in front of us, my husband went ahead and pulled over behind him. And they took him out of the car. And at this time, I'm, I was getting sick. I get cellulitis quite often. And I was getting sick. I knew that if they took him, I was going to be on my own. So I told them his name was different than what it was. So. Essentially, Your Honor, there, there was an outstanding warrant for him in Missouri, and she knew that with her medical condition, she needed him. Um, consequently, she lied about his name. Okay. And this happened where in Butler County or in Greenwood County? On Highway 54. All right, I will accept your plea and find you guilty as charged. Recommendations, Ms. Gillette? Um, Judge, the state's recommendations are 90 day underlying with 12 months, suspended for 12 months, super unsupervised probation, court cost, booking fee. I'm not asking for a fine. Um, No more trouble, no more arrests. Behave for 12 months. Your Honor, she is on disability. Uh, her husband has been returned to custody in Missouri. Uh, she has been living at the homeless shelter uh, in El Dorado pending today's hearing so that she can return to uh, Missouri. Okay. And are, your, are you appointed on this, Ms. Shirley? Yes, Your Honor. All right. I will, under those circumstances, waive the attorney fees. You uh, will not be given a fine. Your term will be 90 days suspended with a 12-month non-reporting probation. You will have to pay court costs of $158 and booking fee of $45 for a total of $203, but I can give you time to pay that. How much time would you like? Um couple months at least. Do you think you could comfortably pay 50 a month on it? Yes. So if I give you 120 days, will you pay 50 each month until you get it paid? Yes, ma'am. All right. Missy, can you give me a payer up here to make sure she remembers to do that? 120 days. Yes. That's 90 days, isn't it? Let's Do what? See. Well, get, just give her 120 days and, and see what she can pay. Okay, how about July 16th at 3.30? You think you can have it paid by July 16th at 3.30? Yes, ma'am. Okay. I may have done my math a little off on that, but I think that's right. All right, so you either have it paid in full by that date or you have to come back here and 
We'll talk about whether your probation is going to be revoked. You could have to serve your time. You could get a private collection agent after you and you could get your license suspended. So pay as you go. Don't forget. Okay. Okay. Nothing further will be in recess. You may go. Missy, can you re-say that date? State versus Kenneth Johnson. I think we covered everyone's appearances before. So, Miss Shirley, how does your client wish to proceed? My client will be entering a plea of guilty to possession of uh, a beaver. Um, it's count two. Uh, without a fur bearer or fur harvester license, it's class C, yes, class C misdemeanor. Okay, state will dismiss the remaining counts, Ms. Gillette. Yes, Judge. Okay, Mr. Johnson, uh, how do you plead then to count two taking or dealing in wildlife beavers without a license? Uh, guilty. Is anyone making you enter this plea of guilty today by threats or promises other than this plea agreement? No, ma'am. And do you understand uh, that there will be no trial? You'll be found guilty and will not be able to appeal your conviction if I accept this plea? Yes, ma'am. And normally I would ask you for a statement of what makes you guilty. Do you adopt the statement that your attorney just made? Yes, uh, I have one question to that, just because I, I was wondering, is that with me also getting my gun back, Ms. Shirley? Yes, yes, okay. it is. All right, okay. and did you do this act on December 28th, the 23? I believe that's what the day, yes. Yep, excuse me, <clears throat> and where did you commit this offense? Uh, my cousin's uh, residence in Eureka on the north side of town. All right. I find you guilty and dismiss counts one and three per plea agreement. Miss Gillette, sentencing recommendations. Um, Judge, this is a parks and wildlife fish and game type of violation. I am not asking for the prosecutor fee, asking for court cost. It is a Class C misdemeanor, so 30 days underlying suspended for non-reporting probation of six months. And um, the fine on that count is $100. Anything further, Ms. Gillette or Ms. Shirley? He was booked, no. so there is a booking fee. Okay. All right. Okay. Nothing. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you. Mr. Johnson, at this time, your fine is $100. Your court costs are 100 and are they 158 or 108 since it's fish and game? They're 108, aren't they? Anyone? Um, court costs and then the booking fee of $45. Your controlling sentence is 30 days, but you won't have to serve that as long as you're successful on a six month non-reporting probation. It only has two conditions, violate no laws for six months and then pay this total, which I believe is 253. It may be 303. It's, it's 108, Your Honor. I okay. just pulled the sheet. Thank you. That's what I was thinking, but then I heard misdemeanor and got mm -hmm. myself questioning. Okay, so 253, uh, if you pay that, that'll pay that and don't commit any offenses, that'll take care of your probation. So when can you pay the 253? Uh, I'd pay it as soon as possible. When, when can I get my gun back? No, I'm not that. Uh, 30 days to pay. Missy wins a violation or wins a pay or a peer date in 30 days. April 9th at 3.30. All right, if you have this pay, paid by April 9th, you don't have to be back here. If it's not paid by April 9th, you do have to be here by Zoom and you may get your probation revoked, your license suspended or turned over to a private collection agent. On the issue of your gun, 
please talk to your attorney about that privately. And then when an order is submitted to me for that, I will consider approving it at that time. Okay. All right. If there's nothing further, we'll be in recess on Mr. Johnson's case. And then Ms. Shirley, I believe you also have Larissa Johnson. I do, Your Honor. We're on the record in 2023 CR 97, State of Kansas versus Larissa Ebony Johnson. Please announce appearances. May it please the court, the state appears by Jill Gillette County Attorney. May it please the court, Mary Ann Shirley, with Larissa uh, Johnson, who appears uh, also by Zoom, Your Honor. At this time, Ms. Uh, Johnson would be entering a plea. Hang on, Mary Ann. She's okay. Judge, we've got an essential plea agreement, but Ms. Johnson has a thing she's going to have to meet. Um, so I was going to visit with Ms. Shirley some more about that. Um, All right. It's something to resolve today. Um, Ms. Johnson is supposed to be getting her driver's license back, but it is not back in the system yet. So I'm going to have mm. to visit with Ms. Shirley about the reinstatement of her driver's license. And if you look at the number of appearances and status conferences, I, I'm not inclined to give her much. I'm not really inclined to give her anything more as far as status conferences. I suppose we could set this for trial and then see what she does, but. One, two, three, four, um, five, six, um, seven, eight. This is at least her ninth status conference. Um, One or two she failed to appear for. But if you two can talk about it and work it out today, that I'd be happy to let you try. If I can have a breakout room with, with her for a moment. Do you want the breakout room with Miss Gillette or Miss uh, Johnson? Miss uh, Johnson. All right, Miss, if you put them in a breakout room, please. When she got out of jail from her failure to appear, she filled out all the paperwork and took it down to the city of Wichita, and they said they would mail her a response within seven to 10 days uh, telling her how to get her license reinstated. She has not yet received, and Wichita is slow to deal with. But she has turned in the paperwork uh, and just waiting for them to get back with her. Again, her first appearance was May 9th of 2023, and we've just been going on and on until March 12th. So what's she doing? Asking me for yet another continuance? Well, as soon as she gets that reinstated, then then uh, Ms. Gillette can amend uh, the driving while suspended to the no license in possession as we had agreed to, and she would be pleading to that. The possession of paraphernalia it doesn't affect her employment. Um, or her ability to deliver her children to and from work and that sort of thing. Well, I'm going to deny the request for continuance of a status conference and set this for bench trial. And then she will either have it worked out or we're going to bench trial. Missy, give me a bench trial. How much time does she think she needs, Miss Shirley? They told her it would be seven to 10 days. And I'm thinking she got out of jail here Tuesday last week or the week before. Uh, but she turned it all in, and so hopefully within the next few weeks. Missy, give me a bench trial in 30 days. Miss Johnson, I, I'm not granting the continuance. I'm setting this for jury trial because you're either going to go to trial or you're going to have this resolved. Last final, this has gone on so long. Missy? Did you say jury trial or bench trial? Bench trial, 30 days. April 23rd at 330. April 23rd at 3.30 is your bench trial. Ms. Gillette, have your witnesses if you intend to try this case. Otherwise, it'll be dismissed. All right, you may go, Ms. Johnson. All right, thank you. You're welcome. On the record in 23 CR 112, State of Kansas versus Larry Eugene Capps, please announce appearances. May it please support the state appears by Jill Gillette County Attorney. We're on for sentencing. Richard Paul on behalf of Larry Capps, who does not appear, it looks like. Well, he was supposed to be here at 3.30. It is now 4.11. 
Larry Caps, anywhere on here, let me know. He's another one of those that this case has had so many hearings. Well, Judge, he, uh, I believe he failed to appear in January and February due to his hospitalization that I informed the court of, and I have had no contact with him since. So I'm going to ask for a continuance. You're going to deny it and issue a bench warrant is if I'm predicting the future correctly. The state would request a bench warrant bond forfeiture. The judge, I would ask for that continuance due to his health condition. Continuance is denied. Bond forfeiture, bench warrant, no bond, hold. And judge, we have uh, we have uh, the uh, we have his evaluation back and everything. So as soon as he's in custody, we can get him sentenced. Good, good. So, some progress. On the record in night, that is twenty twenty four CR thirty three, State of Kansas versus Cole Alexander Knight. Please announce appearances. May it please the court, the state appears by Jill Gillette County Attorney. Richard Paul on behalf of Mr. Knight, who appears in person via Zoom. And how does he wish to proceed? Judge, I just found out this morning that he is, uh, I, I was just appointed, I think, this morning, if not even yet, because um, on the docket it shows him still as pro se. Uh, I was appointed, he is eligible for diversion. I have sent him the application. Uh, we just need uh, basically a diversion date. Missy, diversion date. How about that 423 at 330? Probably a good time to put it because hopefully he'll have himself diverted and won't run into problems with all those trials. Well, I sure hope not. Okay, April 23rd at 330. Mr. Knight, I hope I'm making the impression to poor, uh, to counsel and clients that these uh, continuances are coming to an end and that you'll be diverted and not have to see me again come April 23rd. Yes, ma'am. All right. Uh, Cole, Cole, send that in and if they accept it and you're done, you won't have to show up on the 23rd. I looked at the email. I don't think I got it. Can you, uh, uh, I'll call you later to give you uh, Okay, thanks. So. And I was also curious about the guns, too, if I could get those back or not. So you get diverted, more than likely you will. Okay, sweet. But we'll talk about that later. All right, sweet. The time. All right. sweet. Thank you, Mr. Knight. You are continued on your bond. All with right. The themes we've discussed. All right, thank you. You're welcome. We'll now be on the record in 2023 CR 107, State of Kansas versus Ryan Lee Powell. Please announce appearances. May it please the court, the state appears by Jill Gillette County Attorney. Richard Paul on behalf of Mr. Powell, who appears via Zoom at a separate location of the council. How does he wish to proceed? Judge, this has been tracking with his uh, felony case. I know there hasn't been a resolution. I do know that his arraignment was set in Mar uh, March 8th. I believe that's been continued. So, Judge, uh, saying what you've been saying earlier, I want to uh, request a jury trial for Mr. Powell. Well, let me look at this because this is a misdemeanor violation of protection order, but everything in the notes address preliminary hearing control. So that must be the drug felony case you're talking about? Correct. And when, what's its status? It was set for arraignment March 8th. Uh, it is a Greenwood County case. I believe Miss Gillette can uh, fill you in better than I can. Miss Gillette, can you remind me of its status? Um, I do not have anything down for March 8th. Mr. Powell's other case is, I don't have the file, so I have to pull it up online. Mm -hmm. This case was tracking with it, and they were separated. 
because this is a misdemeanor and the other one's a felony. And Twenty three CR one zero seven, it looks like. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's this one. And that's a lion county that he has going on. It is Greenwood County twenty three CR seventy four. It's the basis case for oh. this this case and the one reason that I was keeping them together is because the domestic battery in case 74 is the prima facie evidence for case 23 CR 107. So if that case is tried, it was my intent to motion to consolidate the cases for jury trial purposes. So we only had to put the evidence on once for the domestic battery and underlying no contact order and that way they could be tried at the same time for judicial efficiency, but the court wanted this case to be hurried along and set for trial sooner. So that case was separated from this case, which will force me to have to file a motion for them to be merged together. Arraignment is set for 4-4 at 9 a.m. Okay. What I'm going to do is set this for jury trial September 30th will be the pre-trial at 9 a.m. Jury trial will be October 2nd and 3rd. You are asking for jury trial, counsel? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Now, Ms. Gillette, when you get to that felony arraignment, if you want to go ahead and consolidate them, I certainly would not object to that because you could probably get your felony set earlier and we can do this. But uh, at this time, I'll set them both for jury trial and that's the earliest the judge Ricky has assigned for jury trials on misdemeanors. Okay. Thank you, Your Honor. If you guys work something out before then, let me know. I understand. Mr. Powell, Thank, you, Your Honor. Thank you. Mr. Powell, you're continued on your bond with all existing conditions and the condition that you reappear for pre-trial September 30th at 9 a.m. and jury trial October 2nd and 3rd at 9 a.m. All right. Can you unmute and let me know that you've you're confirming? Yes, Your Honor. Thank you, sir. You're excused at this time. Mr. Talk to you, Ryan. Mr. Paul, is okay. that the last of your cases on this docket? Um, I had, no, I have two more. I had Miss Richmond. She was on there and then she fell off. Where did we put her, Missy? I'm not seeing her on there. What happened to Miss Richmond? Um, was she on iPhone? She's coming back in. What's her uh, other name? I don't see her on my list. Robin Richmond, yeah, 23CR168. What number is she missing? Um, Hello? There she is. She's I'm three. sorry, my connection went out, so I was just confused. I'm it's here, number, I'm Robin Richmond. Number 14, Hi. Judge, on your list. So my list only goes to 11. Do I need to update it or something? Are you on the wrong? No, I am. I am. I don't, know how I got, <laughs> don't know how I got back to first appearances, but I did. We are on the record in 23 CR 168, State of Kansas versus Robin Richmond. Please announce appearances. May it please the court, the state appears by Jill Gillette County Attorney. Richard Paul on behalf of Robert Richmond, who appears by a Zoom at a separate location in council. And how does she want to proceed? Judge, I was ju I was appointed last month. Um, Miss Gillette and I had had some discussions. There is some. Uh, there needs to be some ongoing discussions, and also, uh, Miss Gillette has just informed me we have some uh, additional discovery that needs to be. So, Judge, I was just going to ask for the uh, this. Uh, this is the first time I've been up on this case. So I was asking for the April 23rd date, Judge. April 23rd, Missy, at what time? Nine or 10? 3.30? 30. All right, this matter is continued to April 23rd at 3.30. Thank you, Judge. You're welcome. You are continued on your bond, Miss Richmond, until that date and time with the condition 
that you appear. She'll be there. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Robin, you. I'll talk to you soon. Does that leave us? Let's see. Which Mr. Which Gibson one? in the Greenwood County Jail, Judge. That's where it leaves us. Okay, thank you. We're on the record in 2024, CR 49, State of Kansas versus Cody Wayne Gibson. Please announce appearances. I'm here, Your Honor. Thank you, sir. Uh, yep. We lost the prosecutor. Richard Paul, on behalf of Cody Gibson, who appears in person and in custody. Okay. Prosecutor's laptop strikes again. <laughs> There she is. Can you hear me, Judge? We can. You're frozen, but we can hear you. Let's uh, go on the record. I think we already can you are. Hear me? Yeah, can you hear us? Hello. Yeah, you're fine. Yeah, I can hear you. It's just my your internet or your phrase. Yeah. All right. Well, we're on the record in 24 Thanks. CR 49 state versus Cody Gibson, County Attorney Jill Gillette for the state, the defendant Cody Gibson in person and with counsel Richard Paul. We're looking at one count of domestic battery, Mr. Paul. Judge, this is going to be for a no contest plea to count one. Mr. Gibson, how do you plead to the sole count of domestic battery, having knowing rude physical contact with a family member or dating? Judge, we lost her again. Ugh. No contact, Your Honor. No contest. Try to get the county attorney back again. It's usually my computer having those kind of problems over here. Judge, if Ms. Gillette's having issues, I can do the factual basis. Okay. All right. All right. So, Mr. Gibson, you understand that if you continue this plea, you're giving up your right to trial. You'll be found guilty and won't be able to appeal conviction. Right. And is anybody making you enter this plea by any kind of threats or promise other than a plea agreement? No, Your Honor. All right, Ms. Gillette, are you able to give the factual basis? I can, Judge. I switched back over to my phone. My phone died, but I got it plugged in. Okay. Sorry. On or about the 25th day of February 2024 at the residence of Sonny Gibson, that is 1563 AA 40th Road in Neal, Greenwood County, Kansas, the defendant... Um, was in a verbal argument with his father and then ended up um, physically hitting his father. He was um, pretty drunk at the time and he um, had started different medication that was mixed with alcohol that causes a um, bad reaction. And so he was under the influence of alcohol and new medications. Uh, he has been back in the jail and has his medications more stable now. That's the factual basis. He and Mr. Gibson, and the, his victim was his father, Sonny Gibson, which makes them in a familiar relationship within the same household. Yes, they were living together, as I recall him telling us at bond hearing. So, Mr. Gibson, I find that your plea is knowingly and voluntarily entered and that 
the state has provided a factual basis to support the plea. So I do accept it and find you guilty of domestic battery. Recommendations, Ms. Gillette? Um, Judge, Mr. Gibson has some other legal issues and I don't know that he's financially able to pay much. I am asking um, for a 120-day um, underlying suspended for six months supervised probation. I think he's back on his medication. I'd like him to continue on his medication as a condition of his probation. Court costs, booking fee. I don't know if the court will order any attorney's fees. I'm not asking for a fine. No contact with Mr. Sonny Gibson unless Mr. Sonny Gibson gets a hold of me and requests otherwise. Mr. Paul, anything further? Judge, I know he's uh, in custody for a while. Um, I know he's got some other issues in some other counties. Judge, I would ask that you waive his attorney's fees. And then I, uh, I think the 120 underlying and the six months reporting are all acceptable, Your Honor. Yeah. Okay. Mr. Gibson, at this time, normally on domestic battery, the court orders a $200 fine and a mandatory minimum 48 hours in jail, which right. nobody served. Right. I'm going to waive the fine in lieu of a certified uh, domestic violence offender assessment. Okay. That you'll have to complete as part of your probation. Yes. Uh, I'm also going to make you pay a $100 domestic violence offender fee. Okay. Your court costs are $158. Your supervision fee is $60. The booking fee is $45. So aside from the offender assessment, you're going to have to pay $363. Okay. But you are going to have to set up that assessment within 14 days. Okay. You have to call them within 14 days and get that set up. Where do I have to call? Well, you're going to call the probation department as soon as this hearing is over. Okay. And jail will have the number. So. The, jail, the jail will have the number, and yeah. you'll need to call them as soon as possible and let them know. That I want you to call, hopefully, by the time they close at 5. Missy, you. do you have a number for him? Is he going to have Jessica, or does he call Gus Elder Raven? Um. Carrie and her number is. You ready to take down Carrie's number? C A R R I E will be your probation officer. Okay. Missy. 620. 620. 953. 2013. Right. Ms. Yeah. Gillette, you wanted to say something? Uh, Judge. He has been on community corrections as well. So for ease of Mr. Gibson, if CSO Seeley wants to combine this over to his community corrections, is there an objection from the court? No, I don't think there is from you, Mr. Paul. No, if, if he can report to one person, that I think it would make it easier. I've been reporting to Julie Stroud, and she's been helping me. She's been pretty good to me. Good. Okay, well, if Carrie wants to... To consolidate a community correction, she can. Okay. But, uh, you contact Carrie as soon as this hearing is over. And you make sure that within 14 days, you've scheduled the certified domestic violence offender assessment. And Carrie can tell you the number for that. Okay. No contact with your dad unless your dad wants it. And he calls Miss Gillette and sets it up. Yes, ma'am. And then I'm going to have your probation officer determine... Uh, the rate at which you pay the 363. Okay. This will be a six month probation mm -hmm. and a 20 day underlying sentence. Anything else, Ms. Gillette, I need to address? I can't think of anything else. Mr. Paul, anything else? No, Your Honor, thank you. Attorney fees are waived, so if there's nothing further, we'll be in recess and call your probation officer as you leave the jail there.
on the, if you're leaving on this post. I don't okay. know if you have any other holds or not. He, do, he does. He's got a revocation here and something in Wilson following. Yeah. $7,500 bond. He's not going anywhere for now. Okay, but you haven't, right. revoked, you haven't been revoked yet, correct? Correct. Right. right. All right. All right. We are in recess. You may go, sir. Mr. Paul, I believe that concludes your thoughts.